um, my olive woods and I started out there for me. But um, they, he was, they were saying that he was not a youth coach, but the youth that got on force on him. Yeah, it was a big thing. Yeah. So all the torches were supposed to be dropped on all the protesters. There we go. Not my channel. I see this good evening in work because I'm playing the past station. <laughs> You ready to go? You ready to go? You gonna open the service? <laughs> right where you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. It's time to begin our service. Amen. Yeah, let's all stand up for the Lord and ask Him to move in the service this morning. Thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your presence. Move by your spirit that you will make the accomplished. Pray that you prepare our hearts right now. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Let's do that one more time. We got to worship him one more time. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. You may be seated. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, we're uh, thankful it is Memorial Day weekend. And I just want to say that a lot of people, I believe, do not understand about Memorial Day. It's really not a celebration. And it is Amen. really a summer Amen. and a very sobering yes. time Amen. because Memorial Day is, is, is when we memorialize soldiers that have died in the line of duty yes, sir. or never made it back home or whatever the case may be. And so but we want to remember them and remember their families. Yes, sir. And, uh, and that's really what it is. It's more than a three-day weekend. So we appreciate the fact that we don't have to work on Monday. Uh, many people, there's some jobs where people do work because you can't shut it down. Mm -hmm. And um, it's more than having a get-together. It's more than an opportunity to, to eat barbecue and all of that, even though those things are wonderful. But we have to understand what it's all about. Amen. And um, this is a time to remember those that have died for our freedom. And for us to be able to enjoy this wonderful life yes, that we have. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful Amen. for America. Yes. And, then, and, and Thank all, you, this, all this negativity yes. and all this junk that's being promoted and to try to make us think that our country is the worst thing that God ever made mm -hmm. and that we're living in a, uh, I don't even know what you want to call what they're trying to portray our country in such a negative way. Amen. I served the country. I, I served in the military. We still served in the military. Amen. I served my country, so yes, I know sir. what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Amen. I was in the position to where I put my life on the line if, it was, if I had been called upon to do that. Yes. Amen. So, uh, you know, I understand and then, you know, I can't I can't imagine what it's like to be a family member and to have them come to your door and tell you yes. that your family member will not be returning yes, alive. Sir. Amen. So let's make sure that we understand what memorial memorial is usually like. If you have a memorial service, it's usually not a laughing, celebrating, let's go eat barbecue type of deal. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is a time to remember an individual and celebrate their life as far as who they were, what they represented, and things of that nature. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's not take for granted uh, how good God is to us and all the blessings of God and all these good things. Yes, Come on, sir. Hey, God bless you. Amen. Come on, God bless you, folks. Amen. Hi, baby. Come on in. They just as cute as they can. God bless you, folks. Come on in. Hey, God bless you. Amen. Hey, it's good to see everyone. And hey, you going to Children's Church? Can I come? I can't come because I got to preach, okay? <laughs> God bless you, too. God bless you, folks. Hey, Amen. Come on in. Hey, Amen. God bless you, too. Hey, Amen. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> and uh, I know it's a three-day weekend. A lot of people probably out doing whatever. But some people probably went up camp, down camp, in camp. <laughs> and man, <laughs> I remember when we lived in Michigan. It used to be up, you know, the Upper Peninsula. People go up. Uh, 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 how do they say it? They, you know, I forget how they say it. But every state has its. On those it was camp it was, uh, it was called something it was else. Something else? Yeah, they, no. they, uh, oh, they called it UPs, something else. Something yeah, else. But, but it was it was called something else, but it was similar to it, was, it had like a little uh, <coughs> colleges. They go up to yes. they had people buy colleges up north and they mm -hmm. go hang out in them. So but here it's up camp. So <laughs> whatever. Amen. God bless you, sister. Good to see you. Amen. We're glad to have all of you here. We thank God for you. We've been praying for you. Yes. Amen. And I want you to know that everything is going to be okay. Amen. And I know it's Memorial Day. I was just explaining to people that Memorial Day really is not a, it's, it's to 
memorialize the soldiers that never made it back home, that died in the line of duty. Yeah. And, uh, and I know we're doing barbecues, we have three day weekends, people are uh, camping and doing all of that, but remember what it's all about. And they, many of them have died for us to be able to have this great yes, country sir. that we, yes, and to be able to fight for our freedoms and, yeah. and different things and lose their life. And as I shared earlier, I would not want to be on the other end of somebody coming to my door and telling me that my family member didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's what it is. Amen. So remember what it's about. Amen. And, and, and it's not wrong to have a barbecue. It's not wrong to have a good time. It's not wrong. But understand that the reason why we live in this great country and we enjoy this great country is because there are people that have died for us to have that. Yes, sir. And, um, and it seems like they're trying to turn us into a third world country. But I don't believe mm. God's going to let it. Amen. 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 Thank God for our freedom. Yes. I'm telling you right now, you yes. better understand yes, your sir. freedoms. Yes, sir. Amen. And, and don't, don't get so caught up in everything that, that you're being offered. and every, Sometimes you're being offered something, but on the back end, you're going to lose something yes, greater sir. than what you're being offered. Yes, sir. Amen. Um, freedom is not free. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Freedom is not free. And also, sacrifice is not sacrifice if it doesn't cost you anything. Yes, sir. Don't tell me you sacrifice something, but it didn't cost you nothing. Amen? I like the fact that I can go to work and provide. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. sir. Uh, I love the fact that I have the strength, I have the mentality, amen, from being saved. God changed my whole life, whole mentality. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the lazy, just, I'd rather just sit at home and let somebody, I'm not into that, but sitting at home and let somebody else take care of me. I'm not, I right. work two or three jobs to make sure my wife and my children eat. Amen. Yes, sir. And make sure the yes, bills sir. get paid. I love the fact that there were times when I worked construction, she had to get them up in the morning, take me to work, and I, it was freezing cold. I was working out in the freezing cold. They dropped me off because they only had one car. And um, and then they had to, I wanted my children to see me working. Yes. Amen. Hello. Amen. I'm just saying, um, that's what being an American is all about. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, there are people that have issues uh, that receive help. And certainly, we're not ministering and preaching against that. But if you're in a position to where you can do for yourself, do for yourself. Yes, and sir. the reason why I say that is because it does something for your dignity. Mm -hmm. It does something for your mentality. It does something for your well-being. Yes. Being able to get up every day and go see about it. Yes. To be able to get up every day and go do about it. Amen. And then get Amen. up every day. And, and when you don't, it's something about when you don't feel like doing something and push you through mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go to work and I'll work it out. There's been many days I've gotten up, didn't feel like going to work, but once I got there and got moving and got stirring, I'll, you know, it, it's amazing. Feelings come and go, don't they? Mm -hmm. um, are you with me this morning? Is this foreign <laughs> to people? <laughs> it should be. Amen. Did you not know the Bible said a man that don't provide for his own is worse than an infidel? Even to the denying of the faith, a man that don't provide for his family in the eyes of God is worse than a person that don't even believe in God, right? So anyway, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. So anyway, we, we didn't come here to talk about all that, did we? Be a Donnie Downer. Amen. What's up with you, my man? You good? Amen. All right, all right, all right. Victoria, how are you? Singing, what's that song? Victoria, Victoria. Amen. But anyway, we appreciate each and every one of you. We want you to stay faithful, keep coming, keep being a part, and keep doing what God would have you to do. You know what? Everything is going to be all right. Yes, sir. I said everything is going to be okay. Amen. Amen. Yes, if you're having um, health problems or you know someone that has health problems or if you're having mental or emotional problems, relationship problems, financial problems, any of those kinds, of, anything on that level, uh, physical problems, do, do you not know that God has the power to help you? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Do you not know that God has the power to help me with those things? Amen. Somebody walked up to me after church last Sunday and said, I didn't know you counseled. Really? And how can a preacher be a preacher if he can't counsel? <laughs> Think about it. I mean, if you can get up and tell people about God, you can't talk to people about, about this and that. Amen? Amen? And so, yes, we counsel as God helps us and, and people need help and, and different things, and especially like uh, when people say they're going to get married, right? What you laughing at? <laughs> what, what you laughing at? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to have a good time. But when people get married, you're supposed to counsel with them, right? right. So they know what the world they're getting into. <laughs> It's a weird dynamic. 
Everybody wants help. And then when somebody starts trying to help them, they get looked down upon, they get knocked down, marginalized, diminished, you name it. So it's kind of a, uh, especially in our personal families. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if you can shout with me on this. If You know, when you're in a family and you start trying to get ahead and then everybody start looking at you side-eyed. Like, wait a minute, you think you're better than us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to stay, if you're going to continue to do what you're doing, yes. That's right. and, then, and you can That's talk right. about me, you can find fault with me, you can criticize Amen. me, but I'm getting up out of here. Yes, sir. You understand Amen. that? I'm That's sick right. of this mess. Somebody uh, yes. in our church here, I want, I would, you know what I want you to do? I want you to take the lead in your family. Amen. 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 And, uh, and I'm going to preach on the message. Be the word of the Lord. It won't be this Sunday. because I got. But next Sunday, I'm going to preach on generational curses. Amen. Amen. Okay. And the only way generational curses has to be broken is that uh, one person has to stand up in the family. Are you with me? And say, I'll take the criticism. I'll take the Pittsburgh. Amen. 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 Sometimes Amen. you need somebody. 
that glass and wrap it with saran wrap it and it in. That plastic. Don't get mad. Get glad. And that lady that used to bounce is a quicker pick up. Yeah. Amen. We're going to receive the tithes and offerings a little later. Let me go ahead and sit down. But I'm just, I'm trying to help you. Yes, sir. This is not a game for me. Yes. I said this is not a game for me. Amen. And, uh, if, if you're going to take the time to come here, if you're going to take the time to come here, why not get the help you need? Yes, sir. Why not, why not let someone, I want to build a relationship with. I want you to understand where I'm coming from, and I want you to understand, I want to understand where you're coming from. Amen. I want to spend time with you. I want to fellowship with you. Amen. Let's, let's fellowship, and let's spend some time together. I want to try, my wife and I individually, get around to each one of you and spend some time with you, whether it be uh, at a restaurant, at a house, or wherever. Amen. We're not, uh, my wife and I have never told people that we didn't you know, you got preachers that got bodyguards and you can't even get to them. Mm. Amen. Why? And uh, hey, whatever. I'm not here to, like I said, I'm not here to criticize. But why would a preacher need a bodyguard? Mm. Something about that just, that's kind of weird. But I don't care how big the church is. Yes. I don't care if you have 20,000, 30,000, what you need a bodyguard for? I love the fact of standing in that back door shaking hands, yes, talking sir. to people. Amen. 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 And if the church gets that big, have assistant yes. ministers and assistants, you know, just, and, and make sure all the people, what the world do you need a bodyguard for? What are you doing that you need a bodyguard, right? right? Amen. And I'm not saying there's not crazy people. I'm not saying there's not, you get, I, I get that, but it's just something about it. Uh, I think Pastor Davis, our pastor, said there's only so many people you can pastor at one time anyway. So you probably should just break that off and move uh, to a different. Always keep the congregation to where you can stay personal with people. Yes. I don't see how you can pastor that many people anyway. Think about it. Yes. Amen. And uh, you get to a certain point, it probably needs to uh, somebody to start an office. Start. I'm just saying that this, it doesn't make any sense. The number one objective is to help people. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'd like to draw your attention to Genesis chapter 7, the first book of the Bible. Although Genesis is not the first, it's, it's, it's a long story, so we won't. Most people think the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is in chronological, chronological order. It's not. It's not. Some people believe that Job is the oldest book in the Bible. In, in the theological, in theologian circles. Okay? And, uh, and Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and all that, the first, the, it's called Pentateuch. The first, come on in, God bless you, come on in. Amen. Come on in, God bless you. Good to see you, make yourself at home. Just don't get your feet up and stay in place, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I want to talk to you uh, this morning about a very simple subject. God, I hope you should have. God bless you. And uh, I don't know that we met, but we will after service, okay? All right. And uh, I'll give, uh, I'll, I want to welcome all of those that are watching online. We have some of our church members that are watching online. I always like to acknowledge people who are joining us that's not here physically, but they're with us online. The service is being broadcast, I think. So I just want everybody to know Brother Key, just to give a few of the solo over Amen. in uh, Turkey. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Sister Elizabeth, uh, why, why did Josie? And uh, even my sister-in-law is my Patricia, your sister, oh. one of them. Sister is watching from Virginia. Amen. Amen. In various places. Amen. 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 And so I appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. I'd like to preach to you from the book of Genesis, chapter 7. And uh, 
like my teacher used to say, and thou rob. I used to be like, what the hell? <laughs> you know what? You, you know, as a kid, your mind, I used to think when it would get day and night, I used to think maybe God has like a switch. And uh, I was like, or you laying out in the yard, you looking up in the, you're like, what is this all about? Yes, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Your mind is amazing mm -hmm. when you're a kid. Yes. And uh, I used to think of all kinds of crazy stuff <laughs> and, uh, uh, when you're a kid. But uh, Genesis chapter 7. And uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher. And uh, I'm going to tell you something else that was weird. When I was in second grade, I told you guys that uh, my, dad went to, my dad and my big brother went to prison when I was in second grade. And uh, it was a very traumatic time for me. Uh, I remember the policeman coming to the house to get my brother. He was only 15 arrested my brother. My dad had already been arrested at another location. And um, it was a very traumatic, traumatic time for me as a child. And, uh, but anyway, I was sitting in class. And you know how teachers used to put the data on the, on the chalkboard? And I used to wonder why she kept the same number of them, you know, whatever year that was. <laughs> when I was in second grade, I had to be like seven. Two or seven, three, whatever it was. Uh, and I said, why does that keep the cell? I thought, you know, if it's 1973, put 1974 the next. <laughs> you know, 19 <laughs> You know, when you're a kid, you don't understand. But good, life's crazy, you know. Life's crazy. I still re one one other thing before I preach. I, I, I want to humor you before we preach. That way I'll make sure I have your attention. I can name every last one of my teachers from first grade to twelfth grade. Every last one. Right? I'm not gonna do it. That's pretty good. But I can name them. Every last one of them. Right? Because I, I don't know why I can do that, but I can. I even remember my mother and all that. That's crazy. That's some weird stuff, but, we'll, <laughs> but I digress. Okay, Genesis chapter 7. It's amazing how certain things in your mind just stick out. They just do it. And you probably have things that you remember that people will say, how do you remember that? Yeah. All right? Yeah. And I want to begin reading in verse 11. And this is in relation to Noah with the ark, okay? Most people can relate to that I've heard, whether they were uh, in school or Sunday school or whatever. In the 600th year of Noah's life, man, Noah was 600. Mm -hmm. In the second month, in the 17th day of the month, the, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. In other words, it began to rain. They were all, all the animals and Noah and all his family was in in the ark. And God, and it began to rain. Okay? It began to rain. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. It's a long time to rain. Mm -hmm. comes constantly. It, it, it evidently rained constantly for 40 days and for 40 nights. In the set same day into Noah, his son was Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Jacob. Those are his three sons. The sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons. Now his sons didn't have three wives. Each son had a wife. Okay, so don't, don't, don't get that. Don't get mixed up. All right? With them into the ark, they and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl, even the birds. How in the world did they get the birds to go in? But they did. By the fowl and bird last time I checked. I know I didn't 
because I never took gap. So I'm not saying I was a rocket scientist in school, but a file the last time I checked is a bird. Right? Yeah. Anyway, after his kind of every bird of every sort, I want you to think about how magnificent and miraculous at the same time that was. Yes. Every kind of creature you could think of went in as God directed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question. Now we know Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. It was estimated at this time, I remember we was in seminary, and it was estimated that it was two to three billion Estimated. And that's all the people that went in. That's all the people that went in. But what speaks to my heart is every kind of creature upon the earth. Not only did they go in, but they went in. Male and female. All right? So, anyway, woo, woo, woo. And they went in unto Noah into the ark. Now, Noah, with God's help, directed them into the ark. Okay? The Bible says, and they went in unto Noah into the ark. Two and two. Of all flesh. So now, I want you to stop and think about this. Not only did all these usually untamed creatures come in, but they went in two by two and they went in organized. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Father, Father, in the name. Pray right now that you help your servant minister in the demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, help me as I stand behind the sacred desk. Make preaching easy, but yet profound. I pray that your anointing not only rests upon me, but upon these precious people yes, Jesus. in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. And let all the people say, Amen. 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 I got two more verses to read, but I just felt the on rush. I felt the prompting of the Holy Ghost to pray before we finish this Bible meeting because I feel the service and the message is about to get away from me. But I want to make sure we pray. And I want to make sure that you let God touch your heart. Amen. And I want you to understand the seriousness of coming to church. Yes. The seriousness of you have been invited or however, however it worked out for you to get here, however you arrived, whatever mode of transportation, whatever it was that allowed you to, uh, the fact that God woke you up this morning. Yes, amen. The fact that you're in your right mind. Yes, sir. The fact that you have the use and the activities of your limbs. The fact that you could have easily say it's a, it's a three day weekend, I'm not going to church. There's a lot of people think that way, but you didn't do that. Amen. You didn't do that. You made God a priority. Amen. And because you made God a priority, 
have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, man. God bless you, folks. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. We just get started preaching. Come on in, gentlemen. God bless you. Glad to have you. Make yourself at home. Amen. I'm preaching from Genesis chapter 7. God, we thank you. God, I thank you for the city of Pittsburgh. God, I thank you for this community. I thank you for the city. God, have mercy on Pittsburgh today. Have mercy on these situations where all these kids are being killed. God, move, I pray, amongst men and women. I pray that fathers and mothers, God, will begin to be conscientious of their responsibility. God, I pray that you build a head around them so that these young people can quit going to prison and quit doing wrong. God, I pray that they can become educated. That they can, God, begin to, some people can begin to uh, help them and be leaders for them. 
it begins with us standing up yes, sir. and saying, if there's something going on in my life, if it's yes, I'm contributing, yes. God, today I got to stop. Yes. Amen. I got to stop participating. Yes. I got to stop adding to it. Yes. And let me make a difference. And then the next person make a difference. And then the next person make a difference. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, my God. 
And I'm going to break you up and suck your eggs. I'm going to break you up for calling me. Don't tell me when this one I got pregnant, this was to happen, because I'm going to call them and tell them what you told me. And I'm going to break you up from that because my ears is not a garbage can.